Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and once again I'm here to talk about horror books but also thriller books. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably noticed that I seem to jump on and off the thriller train. I love them and then I hate them and then I love them again. At the moment I am enjoying them and have some good books to recommend here. As always, it's a good variety and let's get started. First, let's talk horror, and I read And the Trees Crept In by Don Kurtigich. This follows two sisters that escape their abusive home and run off to go live with their aunt who lives in the forest in an isolated cabin. She welcomes them in and their life begins to become so much better. However, their aunt warns them to stay out of the forest that surrounds her home. She says that there is some kind of creature out there that to the reader seems like almost a slender man like creature that is out there and also they start to wonder if the trees surrounding this cabin are possibly creeping in and coming closer. This book is very atmospheric. It almost read like a dark fairy tale or something with magical realism. It definitely does lean into the horror and I was intrigued by it. It's probably more slow paced than some of the things that I typically pick up but it was a fun change of pace for me and I did read this on audio and I do recommend trying the audiobook if you're going to read this book because it was quite the performance. I've definitely read a lot of really good horror audiobooks and I'll give you some links down below to some of my favorites. I've done videos on the topic but specifically what I want to mention is that this one was really produced. So the narrator actually put on different voices. At times she whispered, she rose her voice, there was different voices that came in and at times the actual tracks of audio were layered together so you were hearing the narrator speak multiple times at the same time and it was very jarring. At times I almost thought it was too produced and became almost distracting. But then there were other times when it totally worked for me. I got to listen to part of this book at night when I was trying to fall back asleep. And there were times when an extra voice would just come in and it would startle me. And I just found those moments to be really creepy. So depending on how you feel about a more produced audiobook, this one might be one you will absolutely love. It also has sound effects and I think it made for a really cool experience. The book itself was very interesting to read. It is very focused around the children and their home life so there is lots of content warnings for abuse which is a major focus of the story and just learning more about their home life before they ran away and a lot of people aren't happy with the ending to this one I personally didn't mind it but it was a bit over explained for my personal taste but that just has to do with the kinds of horror books that I like to read so overall recommend it it is young adult and it did somewhat feel like young adult but it didn't have all of the tropes that bug me so much so keep that in mind if you're deciding to pick it up next next we want to talk about a middle grade horror book and that is The Forgotten Girl by India Hill Brown. And this follows a young girl that with her best friend goes off to explore in the forest and they come across an unmarked grave and they are intrigued by it and decide to do a school project learning more about this abandoned grave site. Now they find out that this is actually where segregated people in their community, specifically black people, were buried because at the time they were not allowed to be buried in the cemetery where the white people were, of course, being buried. And this is a really interesting story because there's a lot of layers to it. In terms of a horror story, even for middle grade, I'll say that it really wasn't that scary. It's very atmospheric. It's set in the winter time and there's a lot of talk of the snow. And so you really get that sense of place and you do get the grandmother warned them about the spirits of the snow and it's very fantastical in that way but I really didn't find it scary it is a bit of a ghost story because within the story the girl is reached out to with what she believes to be the ghost of a young girl that was buried in this unmarked cemetery however everyone else just thinks that she is having nightmares or dreams and doesn't really believe it to be true so it's definitely a book that kind of balances between is something actually going on or is it in her head but at the focus of the story really is those first elements. This is an own voices story written by a black woman herself and the character's blackness, if I'm using that word correctly, is very much center of the story. You get to see in her home life talking about the food they eat, the challenges of managing 
hair that is a little bit more unruly than the typical Caucasian, you know, hair like my own. And at the same time, getting to see the prejudice that she experiences in school because she goes to a predominantly white school. And I really thought those elements were incorporated really well into the story and definitely gave me better insight into an experience that isn't something that I personally have seen in my own life. And so I definitely like those aspects. And there were just some really good conversations about segregation and prejudice and just owning your identity, being confident and proud of yourself. And I would definitely recommend this book, not only of course to people of color that want to see themselves represented, but I also think that this book is very important to read as a white person or a person of a different race because I think it's so important to read each other's stories. And I find it frustrating that I find it's so much easier to find diverse stories when I look in young adult or in middle grade. But when it comes to adult horror, it's definitely out there, but I don't feel like it's as well marketed and you definitely have to dig a little deeper. So I just wish there was more of these stories. I wish they were more advertised and I'm definitely interested in reading more by this author. Personally, I'd love for her to write something aimed at adults just because that's my preference. And while I'm on the topic, I did want to get all of your opinion because I've thought about doing a video recommending middle grade horror, whether it be for readers that enjoy reading it as adults or those of you with children that want to introduce your kids to some creepier books. Would you be interested in that? I really don't know if that video would actually get a lot of views and I don't really want to make a video that no one is going to watch. So please let me know if that's a topic you're interested in because I'm still deciding whether or not to film something like that. But I've read a fair amount of middle grade horror and I do like to talk about what I'm reading on my channel. <laughs> now to talk some adult horror, I also read The Silver Eyes, which is a book adaptation of a horror video game called Five Nights at Freddy's. You definitely don't have to have played the video game in order to understand the book, but I'll just give you a quick synopsis here. It's one that I played and really enjoy. This is set in a kid's party place, kind of like Fuddruckers or Chuck E. Cheese, and this place has these animatronic toys or dolls that are these furry creatures. There's a bear and a rabbit, and they dance and sing on stage for the kids, and as you can imagine, they're pretty creepy. You play as a security guard on the night shift that's in charge of making sure that nothing bad is going on. There is a shortage of electricity, and so you have to spend most of the game in the dark and the only times you are allowed to turn on the lights is when you think that these animatronic dolls are moving around. And so this whole game is built on jump scares. It's really fun, it's just a lot of laughs. I'm a huge sucker for jump scares. They get me every single time, whether I'm watching a movie or playing a game. And I always scream and my husband laughs at me, but that's kind of what the game is about. And this book is loosely inspired by it, but again, you don't need to have played the game in order to understand and possibly enjoy the book. This follows a group of friends that are now returning back to their hometown about 10 years after an incident happened when they were I think six years old and one of their friends actually died at one of these party places and they are coming back for a memorial service and this story is very much told from the present day but then reflecting back on what happened and then seeing how their lives have changed in the meantime. The one main character's father was actually the person that created these animatronic dolls which definitely added an interesting layer and I was so excited for this book because all I wanted when I picked it up I went in with really low expectations I swear I just wanted some creepy dolls jumping out of closets and just a really fun adventure story I did not need it to be literary I didn't need it to be complex and this is a really weird criticism to have but I feel like the authors tried too hard to make this book have substance. There is a lot of time spent on character work and development. You have a lot of time spent on their backstories and their relationships, and I just didn't care. It was too long. I read this as an audiobook, and I probably would have DNF'd it, but I didn't have anything else to listen to at the time, so I kept going, but I found it very boring. It wasn't until the end of the book that the action finally kicked in, and I got what I wanted, but it was kind of too little, too late, and I was just frustrated. So if it sounds like fun, and you're looking for a story that is going to explore how these characters were affected by this experience as a child. Maybe you'll get more out of it. If you're looking for just a creepy doll story, 
it's not the best. So I'm actually really disappointed in this one. I don't personally recommend it and would rather suggest that you play the video game and that's just a lot more fun. So very, very disappointed there. And finally, I wanna talk about the thriller I read and that is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. It's a pretty popular one, so you might have already heard about it or even read it, but I'm just catching up now and this is about a middle-class suburban couple that have pretty average lives. They have kids and jobs and all of those things. And in order to spice up their life, they begin to murder people. From the synopsis, you can probably guess that this book requires a lot of suspension of disbelief. And I'll be honest, at the beginning, I didn't know if this book was going to work for me at all because it was just over the top and that premise just kind of made me roll my eyes, I'll be honest. But if you push through, if you just go along with it, it actually turned out to be a pretty fun ride. I, for the most part, really enjoyed this one. I need to say that the characters are really, really unlikable. As you would expect with sociopathic people, the wife and the husband are both despicable and they just don't have a lot of redeeming qualities. But not only that, but their children were also equally frustrated particularly their son is a little so-and-so. I don't really want to swear on camera, but trust me, there is no one that you're actually going to be rooting for. And if you need likable characters, this book probably is not for you. But it was interesting to see how the story unfolded. The first part was very, very slow paced. And I just kind of went along with it. I wasn't really sure. I thought this would be pretty average. But towards the end of the book, there were some changes and plot twists. And for me, the book got pretty interesting and I got pretty hooked in. I gotta admit, I was really interested and binge read the last part of the book to see where it was gonna go. It kind of turned into like a cat and mouse situation. I won't say more to not spoil anything, but if you're someone that kind of likes people having to outsmart each other, this one had that and I thought it was very well written and well plotted and I ended up really enjoying it for the most part. So if you're a fan of thrillers, especially domestic thrillers. I do recommend this one. I had not read a domestic thriller in so long and I'd pretty much sworn off the subgenre, but this one made me think that I need to give them another try or at least consider picking more up. So that is it for this wrap up. As always, I would love to hear from all of you. First, do you want a recommendation video for some middle grade horror books? And also recommend me some of your favorite thrillers that have come out in the last year or so. I have definitely missed a lot of them because again, I can't decide whether or not I like the genre, but My Lively Wife made me think that I need to be picking up some more. So I'd love your recommendations down below. Tell me what are the best of the best and I will definitely check them out and report back. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.